Welcome to Metalenium Pages, Yusuf. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about Dolheimsgard and uh, this new album, Black Medium Current, and more things related to the metal world. So we will, we will start by asking, I think I want a common question. So why did the band la take eight years to release this new album or delay? Oh, yeah, it seems like it's been the recipe since 1999 every eight years there's a new album but you know it's very circumstantial basically every time i release an album i need a break after it you know because i know if i i start making an album just again now it will be very similar to what i just wrote because i'm still in that mindset basically yeah. so now i just need to kind of tune out and and uh, maybe go back being a, a you know music listener and go to concerts and 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 stuff like that myself which i haven't done in a few years you know and there's been no music playing in my living room or anything because i've been shacked up in the studio or or working on my own stuff for so long now so i will need a break basically and then after maybe a year or so i will re restart the thinking process you know and and the thinking process will take a lot of time also to figure out oh, okay what where to go next you know what what should i do this time and um, what do i want to convey what uh, you know like uh, what what are the emotional impressions i want to conjure and 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 share and uh, when i figure that out then then the next step is to try to kind of um, uh, find it you know okay so now i have have a clear notion of what I want to do. Now I need to figure out how to do it, you know, and, and that takes time. And, and, you know, also, there's also a lot of lineup changes on every album. So that takes time, mm -hmm. <laughs> changing people, personnel, you know, <laughs> and, and uh, like a third, fourth, fifth, sixth thing, I don't know, is that I do also have other projects. You know, mm -hmm. I have other active bands. So I also need to share my time with them. So sometimes putting uh, Der Reimsgar on the shelf for doing Dold Vorden's Nam or Bedbön Senna, it's a must, you know. Mm -hmm. So all in all, if you take that into consideration, it takes eight years, you know. But <laughs> I hopefully, hopefully next time there's not going to be eight years. I don't think I have too many eight years circles left, you know. So now i need to cut down at least in half <laughs> okay okay nice nice to hear yeah that's a you know, that's a curious thing because the next question it was uh, talking about this cycle because the first two albums delayed one year two years and then since it seems and then since and then then six 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 international you take eight years eight years <laughs> that's a curious thing yeah but well, you, you must you must also understand that the for the two first records, the template of what we did, it already existed. Yeah. Because, you know, like, uh, Dirt Einstein was really a side project, you know. Mm. And I had with Boons and, uh, and Aldron had another band called Had Fadid at the time. I don't think they ever released anything or recorded anything. But these were our main projects. And and we really started Dirt Einstein because we missed playing uh, traditional black metal because our, our bands were more experimental, I guess. His was more kind of maybe in the Viking genre, and my was the Boon Center, which is later termed the avant-garde genre, you know. So that's why we, we started the Ramsgar in the first place, because we, we we missed playing simple, like, dark throne-ish black metal. So the template already existed from what we wanted to do. Therefore, it takes less time to create it, because you're not really creating it, you're reenacting it basically you know so um and, and people have to understand that you know like e even if we released an album in 95 we had already been in black metal for years you know yeah, like yeah. my first black metal band was in 91 mm -hmm. so uh, by 94 95 um the music like the music I played then and rehearsed with the students and it had progressed so much. And that's why I started missing kind of the things I played in 91, 92, 93, and, and therefore the Lamska was created. And the second album as well, which is more like a black trash album, you know, the template was already there. We knew all yeah. the inspirations we wanted to, you know, so it, it, then if you have maybe you have the whole recipe, it's easy to make. That's why it also 
breaks down on the 666 International, you know, because this time around, it's a bit more complicated piecing everything yeah. together because you don't have you don't have the similar album as example that you can draw kind of uh, yeah. experience and knowledge from. You have to piece it together yourself. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That's, but that's the way that I understood always since 666 International, the music from Dot, 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 dot Heimsgard. So this conversation. So in today's with Dot Heimsgard, music is never easy to listen and to uh, listen to and always brings new things into the music. Always, always. That's that, that's the thing for your music. So do you think yeah. that this that this pattern of experimenting with styles and sometimes uh, you are far far beyond from metal could lead to then the future departure from the band of uh, this aspect to, to the cold metal? Sometimes you will you dot dot Hemsgard will depart to the uh, as a metal band. No, I don't think so. I think there was always be. Um, I th think you know the Hemsgard is is especially tied to black metal because there's where it comes from. So I, I'm not I'm not leaving black metal. I'm trying to expand it. So when I do different records that that sounds different than the traditional black metal. It's not because I hate black metal. It's because I love black metal. It's because I want to give back to it. You know, it gave me so much. So I want to give back to it by trying to to expand the borders of what black metal can be and what it can convey. You know, So I think the Ramsga will always be rooted in some sort of metal. And, you know, if I am tempted to do a a hundred percent non-metal project i will i will uh, i will call it something else mm -hmm. okay so talking about um, <clears throat> talking about this new album black medium current so what can fans expect from your latest record compared to your previous album and how do you did you feel creating an album so very in textures layers etc do you think you can keep pressing the sound of dot heimsgard yeah, this record, you know, I think it was time to make a, a more immersive record, a, a bit more uh, internally functioning, you know, than I think our, our, especially our more aggressive music is very external. It kind of attacks you, whereas this time I kind of wanted a record that kind of just immersed you, you know, like you drown in it, basically. Uh, so I also understood that it it had to be, um, maybe not as complex note wise as some of our uh, previous work and instead be layerly complex. I also had a guideline in a sense because I knew that my starting point was going to be Architect of Darkness from the previous record because I thought that mm. this was kind of uh, a branch of Durham's God that was yet a bit unexplored the more mid-paced, more um, slow mid-paced side of the Rhymes God. And uh, yeah, and where where uh, it basically has to work in the brain. I didn't want to write cool music or tough music or something like that. I guess I wanted to make brainy music or intellectual music in the sense that I, I want the listener to start feeling emotions and start to think. And, and this was, was my best recipe to do that and maybe make music that was more inviting this time, more easy listening in a sense. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, you will need all the time in the world to uncover all the layers and, and stuff like that. But like the, 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 the music that meets you, it, it's not like shrouded in all this, you know, nonsense that you have to kind of pierce through <laughs> at a hundred listens mm -hmm. this is more immediate you know this time it's kind of uh, i wanted to make an album that just takes you and and, uh, and but you still need to give it the attention otherwise you will kind of fall off you know but if you, if you do need that if you do give it the attention you can kind of enter this album basically you know it's it it uh, permits kind of entry and when you're in there uh, there's there's quite a a honest, uh, bleak, black, uh, maybe a bit sad universe in there to explore. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, now talking about this, uh, the, about this subject of, 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 as you tell me, you have a lot of sensations there. 
you have experimented with the feelings that you got in some moments. So in, in uh, all, all, always the musician is experimenting with these aspects internally and externally, talking about the sensations in general. So many musicians always say that, they, they, as you told me, that they don't have a direction when writing music. You just put the all ingredients, the correct ing ingredients that you got, and you carry away by the feelings that you have in that moment. So for yeah, you... Uh, but so but for both you, are correct. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. But, yeah, yeah. So for you, how do the parts of producing an album connect with the idea of sensation in it? Could we say yes. that the music is a constant thinking? Also, I'm talking about this aspect for a mathematical aspect, four, four ribs, three ribs, etc. Or the music is a concept, not thinking, just guided by your feelings. No, I, I think it's both, you know, because if I will say that, yeah, it's a process of thinking, then I would also have to admit that, yeah, but my thinking is affected by my feelings, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. If, if you know like you you spend a lot of time thinking about how the album is going to be and how you're going to put it together it may may very well draw back to your emotions anyway so that's why i'm saying i think it's it's a dual thing that i i i kind of knew this time what i wanted to do and i knew how i wanted it to sound like but i also knew that i wanted to know this, I knew this because of my emotions. I know knew this because I knew what my emotions wanted to say or what I wanted to convey and put into the music. So I think, you know, for me, it was just time to make, you know, like, I don't know, uh, maybe it comes with kind of a um, coming to like a mid midlife crisis of some sort, you know, like, but, uh, that's why I wanted some depth to the album in the sense that it's been 30 years now uh, making music and, you know, looking both in the present and a bit back and a bit forward was kind of three very important ingredients for this album. Backwards in the sense that you, you, you have the connotations there. You still have the black metal there. I think there's a ton of like mm -hmm. early 90s black metal riffs there, yeah. actually. And then, you know, in the present, because I'm telling you a present story, but, uh, and also look to the future in the sense that there's no black metal album out there that's exactly like this one, you know, so it's also a bit futuristic in that sense. Yes, 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 that's, that, that is true, that's true. So, and talking about this aspect, as you can see when a lot of reviewers, or sometimes are very um, inexperienced reviewers, said that this album is a lot of industrial, a lot of avant-garde, experimental, because they want to put a lot of labels into the music. So yeah. as, you are the, as you are the creator of the music, how do you define the music of Dot Heimsgard? Is it avant-garde, yeah. experimental, black metal? You know, for me, it's just black metal, you know. And I, and I grew up with, with the black metal generation where, where, uh, where every band was experimental. You know, if you think about it, you know, like go to the go to the beginning to mid nineties. You know, all bands sounded different. All bands yeah. experimented yeah. with their sound. That's you know, it's nothing more to say. So I kind of kind of kept that mindset, and now, blah, 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 thirty years into the future, this is where I am. You know, but it, the mindset is basically the same, and since the mindset is, is the same, I think I can call the music the same thing. That's my reasoning anyway. But I, I don't mind uh, people defining it as avant-garde black metal. I think, you know, it's a label given to me. And I think labels that are given to you makes more sense than the labels you give yourself, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, if you, you know, because if you give a label for yourself, it's only defined by you. It's, it's you maybe telling the truth or maybe saying something nonsense. But if a thousand or ten thousand or whatever people agree on a label that's made for you, then that label probably is more true in form, you know. So that's why I know also that the people that kind of attributes the avant-garde uh, stamp on Durham's garden, it's done with love, basically. So how can I how can I not not you know, how can I hate that? You know, it's done with love an affection from the people that has labeled this band as avant-garde black metal band. So I can I can easily live with that as well. But for me personally, 
I have, you know, there's no, I don't have any particular interest. I still just call the Ramsgar black man. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, you, um, Dolheimsgard is a band that always uses a lot of synthesizers, a lot of ma and many electronics details in their music. So, how do you, and one aspect is how do you see the future of the art in general? Because, as you can see, last year or perhaps that, I think two years ago, there are some people creating a uh, program or art with artificial intelligence when you put a little descriptions in the box and this box create art. Now, a lot okay. of musicians, a lot of musicians are using to this artificial intelligence for the drum parts, guitar parts, bass players, etc, etc. Et so, how do you see now the music industry are very, very attached to the artificial intelligence to create new music, especially with your influence because you are one of the, these kind of bands that you are always put something further further with electronic synthesizers a lot of things happen so how do you see this aspect in the music now you know i can't predict the future so i don't know maybe maybe you, I, I i i've thought this about you know bands like the pesh mode and nine inch nails and stuff like that that what they did in the 80s was really difficult to do in the 80s and now in the 2020s what the sounds they produced in date is not difficult to produce anymore so maybe that will happen with my music as well you know like when it was tailored or when it was uh, carpented then it was difficult but maybe in the future making music like me maybe is an easy task i don't know and um but i think i think maybe it's a it's a it's a shame in, in, in a sense that uh, we, we are giving up the artistic side to our our, uh, you know, artificial friend intelligence. But it, it, as soon as it is created, it's really no way back, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It isn't. No way back. And, and, and that doesn't really, it doesn't just apply for, for, for music. It applies for everything, you know. When, when AI starts, um, starts curing, curing our sicknesses, when AI starts kind of calculating the 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 best possible trajectory to the nearest star you know when ai takes all over all this stuff you know that's there's no way back then you know we can't put it on fire then and say no we don't want it you know so i guess that will affect everything but uh, but luckily for me i'm still of the generation you know we're all programmed to a certain degree you know i think we are programmed to a pretty big degree uh, but so, so i i will be program to my kind of life era you know and that doesn't include artificial intelligence so it will never be kind of a focus for me and it will never be a, a um, something that will affect what i make or if i make music at all i will still probably continue because even if everything here disappears you know the interviews the concerts the 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 record deals and everything like that disappears this is still my way of communicating with myself you know making music making art it's 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 communication basically you know both both internal and external of course when you release it but the the the, the primal mode here is internal conversation and you 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 take topics you know you take topics or or you take feelings that are not that easily expressed uh, the same way as making a toast or or uh, washing the dishes, you know. So you need a new language for it, and this language is art. And I think think maybe that there there is the place where um, where the AI will struggle a bit mm -hmm. in the senses where I'm talking about now, because because art isn't only the end product; it's the whole thing. So maybe it's also the person behind it. Maybe that's also a defining factor of the art, you know, and um, and the era in which it is produced. Maybe that's a defining factor. Because if you see, look at painters, for example, you probably have a lot of painters around the world uh, that, that are on the level of uh, any historical painter that ever lived, you know. So why aren't they categorized as uh, important or as good artists, you know? Because the context is missing. Yeah. Because then you there you only have what they can manage, but you don't have the rest. So maybe there is will AI will fault 
you know ai will not be able to produce that maybe because there will will uh, ultimately be no artist behind it it will be a no no person so there will be no context so there will be no era so there will be no nothing just the image and the image alone is nothing yeah yeah well that that is true that's true so and as you are an old musician will you give the opportunity that perhaps in the next five years or perhaps who knows in two years three years but it starts now perhaps you will the opportunity to hear the first album created just by machine especially in metal yeah maybe i don't you know somebody told me the other day that you can actually download playlists of electronic music that's just down by uh, artificial intelligence but you know uh, i i have I, i haven't checked it out yet so i guess i'm not that interested i i think ai the day it will work for me is when you use it as a tool as a stepping board maybe even in a sense that when ai was first created you didn't even know that you had the ability or opportunity to use ai in the way that this person or this individual will use it later then i think it becomes um a play player on in the game of art you know when you can use it as a tool if it's just the ai itself it's not really that interesting and i think you know we're just programming these things to mimic what we already do anyway mm. well so on a scientific level as well ai will be much more interesting when they can go beyond what we are doing then there will also be a a capability there which we don't have and and therefore that will also be interesting yeah. mm. but until then nah not that interested <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, talking about the discography of the dot dot Heimsgard, it's um, it's well known that, as I said, it's it's well known that the dot sorry, Heimsgard, I'm losing you. Uh, it's well known that the dot the dot, dot Heimsgard, the doesn't have um uh, doesn't have a uh a, 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 a preferred album, but always some people think that this is is easily to do because they prefer a milestone in the band. So for you. Which album for you define all sounds and characters that the Dot Heimsgard has the begin has the beginning to now? Okay, sorry, you know I I lost you. The connection was broken, so I didn't okay. just heard the last five seconds. I didn't hear anything. <clears throat> okay, okay. So for you, which album define whole sound from Dot Dot Heimsgard to, to, from the beginning to now? Which album? Yes. Of of mine. Yes, yes. For you, which uh, I milestone guess... from your career? Or perhaps, I, I think... you, or perhaps you will do the, in the next, who knows? I don't know. But, but right now I feel they all are important in their own way because they all de de describe, uh, in a sense, an uh, almost picture of the person behind them. You know, it, 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 therefore they are also so different. And I also took so care in all the albums to make sure that the one will not sound like the next. So I don't devalue the album I already made. So this is also the way I can keep all the albums similarly important because they are as important as the other in the specific timeline they are part of. So when I look back on this, maybe in 30 years or if I live that long, I don't know, but. Uh, maybe I have used, uh, produced a few more albums, you know. And when I look, will look back on the whole discography, they all individually will tell a very, very specific story yeah. about the person behind them. And yeah. therefore, you know, the, the story won't be the same. It will be particular, distinct, different stories. And therefore, all the albums will have similar importance. Yes, yes. Well, I yeah, that that is true. All albums is important in your career because all album is very different. So it's yeah. very difficult to pick just one. So yeah. well, we are very close to end this interview, <clears throat> yourself. And for this aspect, what are the future plans that they have that the band has for this black meeting current? Perhaps you will do a, a North American tour, a European tour, you be the Beatles upcoming, or perhaps uh, you will come to Latin America. Yeah. 
you know, we, we're um, we're interested to go everywhere, basically, and and uh, both places we are been, and especially interested in in going everywhere we haven't been yet. You know, of course, there's also also always a financial aspect in the bottom. You know, uh, and I also think um, it's a bit of a late year release. It's 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 maybe odd to talk about late year in April, but the truth is in April. 2023 all the festivals are booked you know for this year so i think the next year will probably be the 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 big year for the rhymes car when it comes to the amount and uh, the quantity of of concerts and shows um so um i think what we have this year that are interesting and different are australia we have a tasmania gig we have a gig in mexico city Ooh. and um hopefully we'll get some more uh, um concepts in in uh, yeah yeah closer to the south americas you know and and beyond uh, that would be great to you know to use the the mexico city show as a anchor and then then go further south you know that would be really awesome and uh, we're doing a few um, greece shows and uh, yeah always need to go back to greece it's it's like our home ground it would also be very interesting to do a, a Maybe I'm not talking this year, but maybe next year. Do a few like differentiated projects as well, you know. Um, maybe make a set where you present the songs in a different manner, or or do a collaboration with another artist. You know, I uh, I I got an offer from a German um, radio station to do a Umbra Omega in a brass version, and I was really excited about that. But then the radio station, they, they withdrew it. So uh, it didn't happen. But, you know, like some projects like that for, for the next few years would have been interesting as well. Nice, nice. Well, about the Mexico tour, well, that will be amazing because I will be, I'm one of the media is in Mexico and Peru. So for, for one from us will be in your concert because the band is amazing. So we are very close to, as I said, we're very close to this interview. And for this aspect, uh, well, talking about other aspects and one of your projects, one of your projects in general is one band that I think create or I think are very involved with a, a new movement in the 90s. I remember when I hear for the first time Bet, Bet with Ende, a band that yeah. always now is a, is a milestone into the black metal for, I think, for everyone because a lot of people, a lot of reviewers say that is like this is this is not avant-garde. This is like more, more like progressive black metal in the big in the mid 90s when all when all bands doing a lot all things a lot faster grow satanic you know, runes for here runes for there so but Ben was and all since things since if your first album written waters did something very different so what happened at that time to create a very complicated music at that time when all people in the explosion of black metal, because it's been 90s, explosion of black metal are playing just roll, savage, symphonic, etc. Yeah, but you know, I think a lot of like I said, I think the first kind of bands in black metal scene, if you if you count the Bursums and the Dark Thrones and the Mayhems and the Emperors and the Enslaved. And um, they, they were all original bands, you know, yes. none of them sounded alike. So when we roll into 95, 94, 95, I think there's coming still a lot of original bands, but now they are coming also bands that are reenacting other bands, basically sounding the same as them. When it comes to us in Vedbun Sene, we kind of stuck to the mindset of, of uh the, the 91, 92 kind of model that now you, you try your best creativity identity it's an important thing in music and uh, you know you make if you have to make sure that you are on the record not just the sound but you as a person you know and uh, it was really effortless it it wasn't like yeah we we had to do a lot of this and that we just came together and made the music you know and uh, and i think also the uh, the fact that we could bring three individuals together that had different ideas instead of bringing five people into a band with the same ideas, you know? So there's all those practical aspects as well that goes into it, you know? So, and I remember when we uh, recorded the demo, um, those who caressed the pale, and we got to hear the recording ourselves, you know, unmixed, but we heard it back from the studio monitors 
and we were amazed. We thought, wow, we sound like this. This is great, you know. So, uh, <laughs> and this is this is maybe how you feel when you listen to a product that's you know there's no equal. It's yeah. never been heard before, not even by you, you know. So yeah, so it was yeah. pretty special. Yeah, so this is written waters is very very special for me because I I I love that album since the since the ninety nine. Thank you. To now to now. So uh, I'm relating again from the Bad Wind and the Bad Wind when they will have a second album someday. Yes, we are in the process of writing it right now, actually. Nice, nice. So nice. We, we do have a lot of music. We don't have a lot of finished songs. We maybe have one, two uh, may, uh, that are finished and that are, we know that they are going to be on the record. We maybe have two, three that are finished, but we know they are not going to be on the record in this form they are now. And and apart from that, we have also tons of riffs and, and ideas and Uh, so the record is already there. It's just putting it together, basically. Nice, nice. And when this detail, do you do you think that is that is well? You know that a lot of people think that this your first album is the great one, the best ones, and the only album. As 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 you know, Demi Lich from Finland just released one album, and now it's a classic band that influenced a lot of bands. I think the same with Bad 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 Ones Andy. Just one album and influenced a, a thousand bands around the world. That's it's amazing. Yeah. So, do you think that this second new album will capture the essence from this first one, or will be much better than the first one? No, I, I think it's very important that the next one goes back to the first one to learn and to to feel and to know. You know, we can't make a record 30 years later. It doesn't work that way. We need to respect the past. We need to respect what we did. We need to respect who we were when we made it, you know. So, and this is like the lesson number one when it comes to making new Vedbuns material. Don't pretend that you, because you're a more skilled musician now, that you can make a better album. Don't be that arrogant. You go back to the source material and you learn from it, you know. And and so I think uh, what we did, have done the last few years has been a very, very smart, intelligent process because we didn't just go in the studio and make an album. We have played the old material for a few years on live circuit now. So, so it makes you familiar again with with the flow and the, the essence and yeah. the emotion. Wow, yeah. And yeah, so this was the wise decision, I think, you know, when you come back, you spend a few years on the old material. So I think we're ready to make something that will match written in waters in the sense that it will be from the same place you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So, well, well one well, uh, according to your answer, so what is your opinion about the, the bands, for example, like Demi Leach or, or bands from the past in the 90s from, uh, or around the world that just released one album? They, 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 well, then they disappear. They disappear, they reappear for this new century. And I spoke with yeah. a lot of them and they told, and they told me that in this, Our first record is the only one record that's important for for them. Then they yeah. never create more records because they think that the they all they they, they this kind of musician thinks that this the first record is the best. They never do something like something like they did in the past. Yeah, no, I can understand it. And I had a conversation with a a friend of mine a few years ago as well. Uh, he is a hardcore musician or a punk musician, and he has a classic. You know, he had a classic the hardcore band in the 90s and they were offered a lot of money to do uh, um, uh, a few shows here and there. And uh, I met him at the bar and he was sitting at the bar and he he seemed really depressed, you know. And I I went to him and I said, hey, man, congratulations. You're playing all these shows this year. Big, big, like hardcore festivals and stuff like that. And he was like, ah, oh, yeah, I don't know, man. And I said, like, yeah, but aren't you excited no not really and i asked him why and he said because it's just a fucking cover band and i said what do you mean all the original members you will play yeah but we are not the same people it's a cover band with you know and i really understood his point you know because they've been way away from it for so long it wouldn't be with the same um passion you know it won't come from the same 
kind of uh, adolescent place. So, you know, he hated it. He hated it. And that wasn't even a new album. It was just doing a few shows playing the old material. But he felt there were so different people now that even if it was the original lineup, it was basically a cover band. Mm, well, yeah, yeah. Well, that, that is, well, for some people, for some people say that it's a cover band. Other people think that differently. Well, well, I'm a huge fan from Bad Blood Wednesday because I really like that album. We did a special podcast in Metal Area months ago about this album, remembering that this oh, nice. is one of one of the creators for me, especially for us, is like one of the creators of progressive black metal at that time. 1995, no place progressive like you did. I, I nobody, nobody. No, no. no. Well, no, for me, it was it was a big inspiration because when I always loved the mu the music when the, when it's going the differently with the other bands when Bad Bones appears with the Green Waters, say hey, it's not like Enslaved, not like Imperor, nor Dark, nor Bruzum. It's something very very different. Love it for that. <laughs> yeah, you you know it. I I remember reading a review of Written in Waters. It was done with a German magazine i think and he was like this is shit this is not real black metal and besides these guys these guys can't play their instruments mm -hmm. and i was like hmm? what what the fuck is he talking about we are probably slightly you know on the on the higher side of musicianship in the black metal scene right now so what is he talking about but years later i was thinking about this and i thought to myself he thought he he was we were bad musicians because he had no experience in how to analyze the music. Yeah. So in his ears and in his mind, it was just noise, you know. Yeah. He ha didn't have the, the templates in which how to understand yeah, yeah, the yeah. complexity that, 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 of yeah. what we were doing, you know. <laughs> yes, yes. So it wasn't even his fault writing that it was, you know, like he just couldn't. On, on an evolutionary level, basically, he couldn't understand it. So, yeah. It, it was a fair review in a sense. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Well, one question, I'll, then I will edit this question. That one question about the well, the Dot Dotheim's Guard now. So next year, Dotheim's Guard and all and also is the Bad Wins and they will accomplish thirty years of existence because the band, both bands are created in nineteen ninety four. Well, Bad Wins yeah. were one year before, but it's. 1994, they exactly, they exactly started with the band, with the bit with Andy. Now, so perhaps next year we'll do something special, or with this year, like a previous anniversary for the 30 years of both bands. Yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm just not, not that big fan of, of the, the anniversaries and stuff like that, because for me that just gives a feeling that you are just nostalgic. You know, just celebrating the past, and I, I really want to feel that the most important time is now at all times, and I, I still feel, and I say that to every person who asks that, I still feel my best music is in front of me, not behind me, and I think if I didn't feel that way, then I, I might as well just give up, right? What's the point then? You know, mm -hmm. and so. I, I ha don't have anything special planned, you know, and, and, and like like we are talking about now, we're talking about a record, Black Medium Current, it's coming out. I would rather focus on this record now to give it its, its uh, proper respect and proper share of attention instead of next year saying, no, now we're doing anniversary shit, you know. It doesn't seem right to me. But, you know, okay. maybe, maybe there's some idea that comes up that can kind of... You, make a slight combination that can feel like a, a celebration but without just celebrating old stuff you know if if something uh, materializes in that sense then it's okay but for now i want to focus on the the present and the future both, with both bands you know and and give give this all the time and attention and effort it needs basically no. Well, Joseph, it was a pleasure to talk with you. Really, really amazing to talk with you. Um, um, uh, congratulations on this new album. It's always a weird band with black metal staff. It really loved your music. It's very, it's very difficult to define your music, but I love it. So perhaps do you want to add something to your Latin American fans and Metalino followers? Yeah, thank you. You know, been a 30-year journey, and I, I, I think... You know, for people like me and 
and Carl, Carl Michael, uh, aggressor Sral, it, it, it's been a kind of a great journey in the sense that when we released our first albums, like Written in Waters, it wasn't a very respected album. It was, you know, a lot of people said, hey, this is shit, it's not yeah, black yeah. metal, you know? And I think, like, for people like me and Carl, we have become more appreciated with the years, you know? Yeah. And uh, so that's an interesting journey because I think a lot of the bands that were hyped in 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 the nineties they are less appreciated now and more seen as you know showmen or or you know just reenactment acts and stuff like that. I won't mention any names, but you know you know what I mean. And uh, and I think like um, people like me and Carl has gotten a better you know like more respect in the later years and people are you know more and more appreciating you know our albums and our work and i think think the the best thing that's been you know my best reward from everything is is the amount of bands and other artists uh, one has been able to inspire i think that's kind of the greatest reward that's been been in 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 this whole thing you know when you read interviews from other bands and they mention like the and and third i'm as inspirations that that that's a big thing you know